What kind of RV should I get? Oh my gosh, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Like, yeah. huge difference. Totally. Not just a little bit. Yes, cheers yeah. to the noobs and all those that are seasoned. Cheers. Yeah. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. Hey, Shree. Hey. Will you cut my COVID-19 hair? <laughs> yeah, it kind of needs it, doesn't it? Are you going <laughs> to highlight my COVID dark hair? <laughs> uh, sure. You don't mind how it turns out, do you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of the COVID-19 thing, mm -hmm. have you noticed how much more interest there is in RV living right now? Well, you know, I've had a couple of friends already message me and asking for my advice because one is going full time and one is taking trips and wants advice. And wow. Yeah. I don't think people really want to travel by plane or cruise ships or stay, stay in hotels. A hotel right now. Right. right. Yeah. It's no wonder RVing is getting more and more popular. We actually have a RV newbie question in our RV living full-time mm -hmm. Facebook group. We actually have a lot of RV newbies that are watching us now and I think that they would really benefit from some of these questions right. that we're getting. Yeah. And Kim actually had a great question. And I want to share with you guys because I think it's going to help you when you're kind of trying to figure out some of these initial first steps. Yep. And, and one of the ones people have is what is the right RV for me? What kind of RV should I get? What is the best <laughs> RV? Right. What's the best RV? <laughs> and Kim went ahead and did some of the initial research and actually came up with a list of the top 10 RVs to go into. Right. She's done a lot of research. Yeah, she has. And there's already 60 or 70 comments on that right. and besides our own comment on that People one. have a lot of opinions about the, the RV industry. They really do. Yeah. And I think those are helpful to mm -hmm. a degree, but you need to realize they are just opinions. They're just opinions. And here's our advice, like what we think you should do. You need to make a list. What kind of RVing are you going to do? Right. Are you going to live in it full time? Are you going to be a weekend warrior? Are you going to tow it with your current vehicle or are you going to buy a truck? Uh, or are you going to buy a drivable unit like a class A or a class B van, something like that? Uh, how many are there uh, in your family that's going to be going with you? Right. And sometimes buying a used may be a better option because when you buy a brand new RV and you take it on your first trip, they call it the shakedown, the initial shakedown. Yeah. And that's when things start kind of not really, I don't want to say falling apart, but it is kind of falling apart. Just like the trim may fall down or cause right. it's like putting your home through a eight hour earthquake if you travel for eight hours. So things are going to happen. Well, and that's what we did with this one. Yeah. We bought, bought a used, gently, gently used barely RV. Gently, barely used, but it had traveled all the way from the north to Texas. Yeah, thousands so, of miles. Yep, it had it had its shakedown. And we feel like the small issues we've had with it are pretty minor. Wow, compared, compared yeah. to what we were used to. Really? Yeah. Totally. Because in the end, all manufacturers are going to have issues. They right? are. Yeah. They are. I mean, even Grand Design, which we're kind of partial to yep, because we're in we a are. Grand Design right mm -hmm. now. We love our Grand Design. They can put out a unit that might not be up to spec or maybe it's the night shift. It could be the night shift. We did hear that in the last Forest River when we were in that sometimes the night shift people don't really pay attention to what they're doing or they're kind of off. Uh, somebody had installed shower tracks with the holes pointed out. Right. I mean, basic, basic stuff. And so their bathroom flooded, you know, from the shower. And it's just like basic things that I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and quality can vary from year to year, model to model. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a manufacturer might make changes to a design that's not maybe fully road tested. Yeah. And maybe some of those won't work out quite so well, change components. And all of a sudden that component uh, well, mm -hmm. speaking of Grand Design, they had uh, some bad refrigerators. Yes, they for had a while. refrigerator problems. And it yep. wasn't 
you know, Grand Design's fault, no. but it was the vendor that yeah. put them in. But, yeah. you know, Grand Design kind of got blamed for the bad refrigerators. Yeah. yeah. So I guess with that, it would be important to look at what's the customer service behind the company. Wow. And huge difference with this RV compared to our last one as far as yes. customer service with a manufacturer. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Like yeah. huge difference. Totally. Not just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like this RV compared to the old RV has one tenth of the issues. Maybe that less the... than that. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. We had a lot of issues with the Columbus. Yeah. And well, a, a few more tips on this. Oh, and it was shaken down for how many years? Yeah. And, right. Uh, I bought that one new. So, and how many years? Let's talk about how many years. Oh gosh, was that like six, seven six, years? Six, seven years, and yeah. it was still shaken down. <laughs> but you know what? The first couple of years, it was pretty much problem free. Really? Yeah. It's like, huh? Interesting. Like, I wasn't with him then. So after after the warranty <laughs> ran out, there was still an extended warranty, but the factory warranty ran out. Then the issue started happening. Is that as soon as I joined you, the issue started happening? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not me, is it? No, no, like two <laughs> years afterward. And But a couple other tips that we would recommend is uh, if you can rent an RV, if you're brand new, if you haven't taken an RV out before, uh, Think about renting one. There's all kinds of rental sites out yeah, there. I think that's a great idea because you can kind of get a feel for what it's like to RV without actually going all in on the investment. Right. And, and another thing you can do is your first RV is not going to be the end all be all RV. No. You're going to find things that, oh, like, I wish I had gotten that option or this option I thought I wanted, I don't really need. So, so. It, it, for, as an example, a lot of RVs have the bed and a slide. So this one doesn't. It's actually in the, what do you call the front nose area of yeah, the... Yeah, the front cap. The front cap. This is our front cap. But um, this one, we're able to have these nightstands, which are huge. That was big on your list. That was big on my list. You know, we had one that was in the slide, didn't have any kind of nightstands. And there's space. Yeah. On the, side on the sides of the bed. Yeah, I really like this right. setup right here. This was one of the things that were on my list. So yeah. you, you do need to look at different RVs and make a list and what your preferences are in each one, I think is really helpful. Right. And somebody gave me some great advice and I think that's it's it it holds true still today that if you find an RV that's got eighty to ninety percent of your want list, that's when you buy. Yeah. Because you're yeah. not going to find a perfect RV. No. Even but, this one wasn't our perfect RV, but it hit so many points on the list. Right. So we'll just say one con to this RV okay. really quickly yep. is the underneath storage. Like, it is zero gone, much. Gone. Yeah, like, we had some massive storage in the last one. Right. And yeah. this one, so that's created some issues. Everybody's like, well, that's what the toy hauler is for. But right. it's like, no, the toy hauler is for office space, right. which we still have our storage in there. So that's why I'm working in here. Yeah, we're still, still, <laughs> still juggling that. Uh, yeah. And a couple more quick tips on this, and then we'll move on. But... Uh, get on Facebook and join the various owners groups yes. for the manufacturers that you're interested in or the, the make and model of that RV. Wow. Wealth of information. Right. And for example, I used to be on the Columbus RV group and used to like follow what people were saying, problems they were having. It's a great resource too when you start, if you have a problem and you can reach out to these people and more often than not, they've figured it out and give you the answer. So those group pages are gold. And I'm noticing now that I'm in the Grand Design RV group, the differences on how many people love their RV <laughs> compared to the Columbus group. There are people that love their Columbus. Yes. They do. There's a lot of people that are super happy. But I'm just noticing a little bit of difference, and this isn't, you know, I'm not trying to sell the grand design. I'm just saying this is our experience. Right, and, and no one can have an experience with all makes and models of RVs. Mm -hmm. And, 
you know, we've had some comments on there. People love their Forest River product. That hasn't been our experience, but if some people have loved their Forest River, that, that's awesome. Maybe they've improved some things. So that's yeah. super cool. But yeah, get on those Facebook groups. And uh, thanks, Kim, for your question. Yeah. And we hope this helps you and helps a lot of you out there to kind of kind of make that decision. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a big decision. But it's right. a lot of fun too. So have fun with it. Have fun with it. Don't stress out about it too much. And, and enjoy the journey. <laughs> of buying your first <laughs> RV. We have another viewer question. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's unusual. A viewer question? <laughs> no, this is a great one. Uh, since you're getting ready to... And I'm joking. I love viewer questions. Because well, that's, what, that's what we're doing. We're here to help. Right. What... What are you doing in the uh, pantry here? Oh, I was getting ready to work on um, cleaning it out because there's stuff in there that we have had since we've been RVing. So there's things in here that I thought we would use, but we haven't. Well, that's perfect because Cindy has a question. How do you decide what to keep, sell, get rid of, and what to take in your RV? That's a tough one because you kind of have to get going and then you realize what you need, what you don't need. And some things you think you need, you don't. And some things you think you don't need, you're gonna wish you did have it. Right, you wanna have room for gadgets and things that you hear of that will save space. Yeah. Like the Instant Pot, Right. that was huge. That it, so counter space is, uh, precious precious real estate in an rv and we have very little of it but the instant pot and the air fryer or they made they made the cut for our rv right and so this kind of continuous purging like a couple years ago uh what we got rid of like 75 percent of the dishware we did that we had we just didn't need it we didn't use it why keep it and it still feels like we have too much we still have too much Sometimes. i have a juicer a big juicer that has all these different parts and bought it what about three years ago used it for a little while but then we haven't used it since so ah, that's a tough one it takes up a lot of space we're not using it I should probably get rid of it right mm -hmm. so so think of it as a continual process of purging and not feel like you're gonna go into your RV the very first time and have exactly what you need because you're going to have too much, yep. trust us, yep. and you're going to want room to add some of the cool gadgets, kitchen stuff, whatever, right. that are going to really make your experience a lot more enjoyable. And also, with uh, if you're living in your RV, you also want to think about what kind of clothes are you going to wear when you're camping? Yeah. You don't need five ball gowns. <laughs> yeah. <Ladies. laughs> but, you know, we do keep, you know, comfortable clothing. I mean, even this is a skirt, but it's super comfortable. Um, just comfort. Comfort and maybe a nice outfit to go out in every once in a while. But yeah. other than that, it's chill clothing. Closet space is kind of a real uh, yeah. issue. We, yeah. we have quite a bit. We do. This, but it's still compared to a house. It's not very much. Right. And I mean, you could be working from home and maybe doing some Zoom business meetings and you still need to have some dress shirts. A couple of dress shirts, but don't worry about the pants. Right. <laughs> just, just don't stand up during those Zoom calls. So. And if you are, make sure you're wearing your tutu. <laughs> your ballerina so, outfit. So we hope that helps you out, Cindy. Yeah. Thanks for your question. So Dawn asks, how do you find free campsites? Well, actually there's a couple of apps or websites that we use quite a bit. Freecampsites.net is one that I've used a long time and also the Compendium app that you can get for your phone. Those show a lot of the free and boondocking campsites out there. And here's a tip actually for uh, finding free campsites or getting into a new area to see what, you know, if you have a big RV like what we have, you know, finding a spot that you'll fit in is kind of important uh, because a lot of the sites actually will not accommodate such a large fifth wheel like what we have. We'll pull into town and maybe find an RV park for one night like this. Go ahead and settle in for the night. 
uh, top off our water, uh, you know, make sure batteries are all charged, dump the gray and black tanks, get all that handled. But the important thing, we will either disconnect and take, uh, well, you'd take your maybe truck if you don't have a follow car, but we actually take uh, the adventure or tow car out and scout out the various boondocking or free campsites in the area. And because if, if it's a tight squeeze, you don't want to have your RV with you and it's a lot easier to zip around in a small car, check out these sites. And if you find a great one that you like, have like a couple of cheap chairs or a cooler a couple of things along that you can leave at the site because a lot of these uh, free campsites are a first come first served basis that if you don't claim it and put your name on it that somebody else can come in uh, if you're not there and it just depends on what you're getting into. Uh, different sites have different regulations. A lot of them will let you stay for up to 14 days and then you need to move to another spot. But that's a little tip that we've used on a number of times uh, to scout out and find great uh, free campsites or boondocking spots. Hey, guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time to wine. All right. Is it five o'clock somewhere? <laughs> it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess when you're RVing, five o'clock doesn't really make a difference. It's like, yeah, it's just when you want to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just don't do it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to whine about? Well, let's uh, have a cheers to yes. all of our future RVers out there. Yes, cheers yeah. to the noobs and all those that are seasoned. Cheers. Yeah. And actually, we don't have anything to whine about. No, we don't. And uh, we hope you got some value out of that little Q&A yeah. right there. And uh, gosh, there's really hundreds of more questions that we get that need to be answered when people are going to be RVing. Yeah. And actually, I wanted to say we don't really have anything to whine about. We are so grateful to have this lifestyle and grateful we can help you guys and yes. your questions yeah absolutely and we actually have some friends that are helping answer a lot of these questions as well yes because we kind of learned the trial and error way over the last several years answering a lot of these questions ourselves it's years and years of making a few mistakes along yeah. the way and, trial and error for sure uh, but actually, our friends and fellow RVers, uh, Jason and Ray from Getaway Couple, uh, Tom and Kate from Morton's On The Move, and uh, Kyle and Olivia from Driving and Vibin', all three of those full-time RV couples got together and made these courses on how to start RV living. Yeah, I really wish there was something like that before I started. You probably do too before you started since we started at different times. But I remember just like watching tons of videos. I had so many questions, but this is like consolidated all the good information in one place, which I think is gold. Right, I think that's really key that uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there, but these courses really do consolidate a lot of great information and just, many years of RV experience down into one. Like one course is how to pick the perfect RV yeah. for you. Yeah. Kind of like we discussed, but in way more detail. Yeah. Also, do you want to save money uh, on like finding free campsites and boondocking? They've got boondocking uh, 101. They are the experts. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like uh, Kyle and Olivia, driving and vibing, they pretty much did that exclusively. Right. Yeah. So, they are they are really good at that. Right. Gr ton of great information on that, and uh, they also have uh, what are the steps on going full time if that's what you're planning on doing, going from making that decision to transitioning into full time. Yeah. That RV can, life. Yeah, that can be a little overwhelming transitioning from living full-time in a house uh, to traveling full-time in an RV. Huge learning curve. 
Absolutely, and it's always great to hear that in-depth experience from other couples that have done it. And this is information, again, that's not on YouTube. It's exclusively in these courses, and we want to help share these courses with you. So we put links down below. You can check them out if that's something that you're interested in. Right, and right now they're having a great sale, which I thought was now is a good time to let you guys know about it because you can save a significant amount of money. Yeah, on. several hundred dollars if you buy the bundle of courses yeah. all together. Yeah. And uh, so we hope you enjoyed this video, that you got a lot out of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and again, cheers to you. We yeah. can't wait to see you guys on the road as fellow RVers, whether it's full time or part time, and you know, basically enjoying all this lifestyle oh, man. has to offer. So grateful. Nothing to whine about here. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we will see you on the road soon. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Take care, and we will see you guys in the on next the road. video. <laughs> and if you have any RV newbie tips and suggestions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. What are you doing, Tom? Is this all secured? No. Nice and tight? No. It's not going to go flat. I don't know. Ah, don't scare me like that. Where's my beer? <laughs>